Elizabeth uh, is queen, yada, yada. Um, okay, the, uh, the government website, social media accounts, as well as the royal family's website will turn black and the publication of non-urgent content must be avoided. Uh, the media would be informed by the announcement to a PA media and the BBC through the radio alert transmission system, or RATS, uh, and to uh, the commercial uh, radio on the independent radio news uh, through a network of blue orbit light, obit lights, which will alert presenters to play inoffensive music and prepare for a news flash while BBC Two would suspend scheduled programming and switch to BBC One's broadcast of the announcement. While BBC News will air a pre-recorded sequence of portraits during which the pre uh, presenters all, uh, on duty at time, at the time, will prepare for the formal announcement by putting dark clothing prepared for this purpose. Do you think they keep it on site? It's, uh, sounds like it. <laughs> Here's our, in case of Queen Death, break glass. Uh, the Guardian's reported that the Times has 11 days of prepared coverage ready and that ITN and Sky News have long rehearsed her death, but uh, substituting the name Mrs. Robinson. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Interesting. So that's basically what it is. is, is all communications are going to shut down. They're not going to have any kind of... Well, it what, sounds like I want, I, I, see, this according is, to Twitter reports that that's starting to, to take place. So I am and not to get dark because I know we're coming up on the, the 21st anniversary of it, but uh, I'm fascinated by special report coverage. Like when when something happens in the news cycle or in the media mm -hmm. that's out of the norm. Specifically, like I remember on and around 9-11 for like the first three days after the fact. Every single channel was playing somebody's news coverage, mm -hmm. up to and including Nickelodeon. Yeah. They were playing the news. It was yeah. unprecedented that Nickelodeon cut away from children's programming to show mm -hmm. news coverage of what was actually happening. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. It was very weird. So Different. I would, I would love, and I'm not saying, you know, God save the queen, but uh, I, I would love to, to be there to watch what's happening right now. Be to a watch part of the, the history. TV go black. Like, yeah. Be a part see, of the history. Do they run like, like you said, inoffensive music. They have yeah. all this stuff prepared, so you know they've, they've got like hundreds of hours of tributes. I'm I'm sure it's Patreon. CNN has a th a video that they're going to play. Thing from the '80s, a chorus playing a. Again, you know, God save the queen and all. If this is it, this is definitely going to be. I mean, out. you think about it, World well, War Two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. The ...by the show The Crown. Uh-huh. You know, 40s, 50s, whatever. I think, I, as I've gathered, each season is like a decade of okay. her life or something. Now that this is in the news, I'm sure. Netflix is clutching their pearls on this bad boy. But, yeah, unfortunately, it sounds like this might be the day we get that news. The way, the way. We do have a full hour for you, so we, sh we need to get started. We're going to have uh, uh, Steve Alvarez and Don Will join us. It is finally here, so we're going to get an update from them. Uh, we're also going to talk caps. Out of the historical center. Let's go ahead and get you up to date on the weather. I'm meteorologist Steve Hamilton with your Pecos Valley weather. About the same over eastern New Mexico and the western panhandle. That'll take us into the low 90s for the afternoon high today and sunny. A few clouds overnight, low 60s, and then we'll hit the mid 90s with a sunny day coming up on Friday. Saturday, sunshine with a few clouds and low 90s, and then a lot cooler with a few showers Sunday, 85. That's your latest forecast. I'm meteorologist Steve Hamilton. Thank you, Steve. Currently 67 degrees here in Roswell. Humidity at 66%. Winds are calm at the moment. Uh, some haze today, but uh, sunny or partly cloudy, mostly. Uh, 91 today with southwest winds 5 to 10. Uh, haze continues to about 10 p.m. this evening, otherwise mostly cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 64 degrees and south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy for your Friday with a high of 92 and south winds 5 to 15. Mostly cloudy tomorrow night with an overnight low of 68 degrees, south winds 10 to 15. For your weekend, Saturday, mostly sunny, high of 89. Uh, winds will be out of the north at around 10 miles per hour. There is a 20% chance of showers Saturday night. They say if we do get some thunderstorms, could produce some heavy rainfall. Mostly cloudy, overnight low of 65, and a 30% chance of rain Sunday. 
mainly for the afternoon. Also, some of those storms could produce heavy rainfall, otherwise partly cloudy, high of 84. All right, it is 814. We're going to take a three-minute break, and then we're going to talk uh, Dragonfly Festival on the other side. Don't go away. The Eastern New Mexico State Fair, a celebration of 100 years, is happening October 3rd through the 8th, and we want to see your arts and crafts creations. Turn-in dates for arts and crafts entries will be September 23rd and 24th from 9 to 6, and the 25th from 1 to 6. Baking entries are due October 1st from 9 until noon. Flower Show A turn-in times will be October 2nd from 8.30 to 11.30, and Flower Show B turn-in times are October 6th from 8.30 to 11.30. Log on to enmsf.com to download this year's fair book or call 575-623-9411 at paid for by the city of roswell lodgers tax we teach our kids to say please and thank you to total strangers but we get so familiar in our marriages and families we stop being polite to each other hi this is pastor troy and my wife miss julie smotherman for the joy of marriage In the love chapter of 1 Corinthians 13, it says that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. We emphasize being polite to each other in our family, which promotes an attitude of respect and brings peace in our home. Remember your manners with the person you love the most. Appreciate the things they do for you and let them know. Being polite to each other can help you avoid conflict. Let's be polite to strangers, but let's not give our best to the people we don't live with. Let's give our best to each other. If you have any questions or would like further information about the Joy of Marriage ministry, please go to jomconference.com. If you are missing a tooth or several teeth, a dental implant may be the ultimate solution. Implants look and feel so much like real teeth that you probably forget you have an implant. Maupin and Brown Dentistry is one of New Mexico's most experienced implant providers with literally thousands of implant patients who are absolutely delighted with the results. Call Maupin and Brown today for an evaluation. You'll be surprised how affordable implants can be. Maupin and Brown, your choice for experienced, state-of-the-art dentistry. Jennifer from Trustmark Roofing here, and I can tell you it's not always easy being a female in a male-dominated business like roofing. I remember one time I was at a meeting to bid on the roof for a local college, and it was me and 13 men. Well, I won that bid, and I'd like to win your business too. My dad was a contractor, and I've been around building and roofing my whole life. I'm licensed and bonded, and I've forgotten more about roofing than most roofers ever knew in the first place. But what really sets Trustmark apart is an obsessive attention to detail that ensures that everything goes smoothly the first time. I promise we will treat you right with respect and we will make you happy. So yeah, it might be a bit odd for a woman to own a roofing company, but give us a try. Let us give you an estimate for your roof. I think you'll be glad you called. For all your roofing needs, call us at 575-755-ROOF or find us online at TrustmarkRoofPros.com. Trustmark Roofing People first. Mulan has the highest kill count of any Disney character. When asked for comment, Buzz Lightyear responded, To infinity and beyond! Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 18 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us in studio this morning from Bitter Lake Wildlife Refuge. Well, friends of Bitter Ranger Dude out at Bitter Lake Wildlife <laughs> Refuge. <laughs> Good morning, guys. I uh, just ingrained in my brain that park ranger, you know, whole image of how it should be. And so I just immediately. (laughs) Call her. As long as you're not hunting down. That's right. (laughs) But um, I can't. Now, but uh, this week, you Dragonfly Festival, a full blown. all happening this Saturday out at Bitter Lake. So the staff's just been working, getting getting the refuge prepared, looking good for the public. Yes, absolutely. You might come out and say, man, they've done some upgrades and things in yeah. the last couple. New signs. Uh, to the festival right now our Pecos sunflowers are in bloom it's an endangered 
the refuge. Now, how long are they going to be in bloom before they start going? Probably their peak will be in a couple of days. Yeah, maybe even less. Yep, yep, yep. And it's it's yep. really nice out there. Ops. Yeah, there might yeah. be some good ones out exactly. there with the wildlife. But if you're not familiar, the Dragonfly Festival is... And, and it's a... Uh, it's really... It's Saturday's... First Friday. event tomorrow. The, the uh, Stargazers after that. I think so. That's another festival. Yeah. <laughs> uh, th- uh, you're correct that tomorrow, um, by popular demand, we got her back. Good. She does a uh, presentations on. <laughs> and, and Sorry, she, Jurassic Park fans. <laughs> 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 she does. She has a good rapport with the public and um, owl and some other birds. And she's uh, just full of knowledge on the birds. But we recommend you guys getting there maybe and okay. once that's full. It's first come, first First come, sit. first Joe Skeen Visitor Center. Yeah, uh, man. And, it, and, and if you don't, if you don't quite make it in, hang out, walk around a little bit, and then stick around for stargazing. Afterwards. Correct. Just, yeah. uh, Roswell um, Astronomy Club has been doing this for several years, and um, it was becoming real popular at, before COVID. And uh, you know, the uh, we're away from all the city lights, mm-hmm. so they have a good um, uh, view of all the stars and stuff, and they they they're real enthusiastic. Um, yeah. Hopefully we, the clouds don't become a problem Friday that, night. That's true. They're I was just always, looking at the weather, and they say yeah. they're not talking rain, but they are talking clouds. clouds. So. And we have had, we've had some times where they canceled it because it's just so cloudy. Nothing to see. Nothing to see. <laughs> exactly. The cloud gazers took over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, the, got uh, it. the other festival people came over. <laughs> some, sometimes you'll get intermittent clouds, and you get... That little spot right between the cloud, and you yeah. get a good picture. Get a little sweet that's spot, yeah. yeah, yeah. You gotta wait for them, but those moments are there. Yeah. You just gotta look. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll be Friday, and uh, it, it, um, that's uh, it, we're like I said, we're excited, kicking it off. Yeah. On Saturday, um, if you missed Friday's program, she's gonna redo that bird program at two o'clock on Saturday. Okay, so, two p.m. So yeah. if you'd rather do it during the afternoon on Saturday, correct. That that then you that'll can, work. That, but and the stargazing's only Friday night. Yeah, stargazing's only Friday night. And uh, um, we will have two other programs besides hers. Um, in the morning at, at 11 o'clock, we have uh, Justin Stevenson. He's going to be doing a program on bats. He's okay. a bat expert, um, and it'll be Bats from New Mexico. He'll have a couple of live bats to show people. Is he Batman? But Batman. That's <laughs> that. <He'll... laughs> He's the Batman. That's Batman. I'm Batman. <laughs> We'll put the bat symbol up there in the go. sky to, on Friday night. Because that's a big, there's some big shoes to fill. Be yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so he's at 11 o'clock. At 1 o'clock, uh, we have a local photographer, Jerry Holmes. He's been going out to the refuge, uh, taking pictures throughout the year, and he's going to do a presentation on all his. He's a great photographer. He's going to teach you how to do uh, uh, techniques on nature photography. So nice. that's at 1 o'clock. Um, at twelve o'clock, if you if you haven't heard yet, we have over two hundred butterflies mm-hmm. that we are going to release. These uh, are the monarch the monarch butterflies, butterflies. Mm-hmm. and um, it's free. Uh, your, is there still uh, some room for kids? We to still sign have up? kids. Yeah, the sign up. They call at at six two five four zero one one. Okay. Um, and there's another number there too. There six two five five seven five two four four six two five six. Yeah, the try one. either those two. Okay, and um, just tell them you want to have a, um, um, a a butterfly release for my kid, my kid or okay. or grandkid, name and whatever. It's yeah. gotcha. free. What they do, you have to pick up a ticket, and then um, on Saturday, um, you might want to get there by eleven thirty. Start getting on lines. Okay, and you present them with the ticket, and then. They give you a monarch to release. Gotcha. So it's they, on their finger and stuff. There's the kids actually get to touch them and stuff. So say a little, cool. little bon voyage. They've had times when those butterflies have, have been put on a kid's hand. 
If they barely touch their finger, they're gone. Yeah, they're like, I can't. You know. <laughs> Let me the kids are just here. done. So. <laughs> Chomping at so, the bit, yeah. Anyway, uh, give us a call and... Uh, Okay. Stuff. Do that pretty quick, though, here. Correct. Yeah, fill because up. It, mm -hmm. um, we are already getting full with several of our tours. Already, that is full already. Yeah, that's the um, only the opportunity only, yeah, here. For, so. so, you know, part of this reason for the festival is to educate the public. We have over 300 and... Over and... And, huh. and it was... It was Actually, spotted more towards Dexter area. Okay, so it, and, it got a yeah. little farther so, off course. Yeah, there, but. and you know when something like that happens, it's real interesting because the bird world. There's actually a bird hotline where people get on and tells them where some of the rare sightings. And we've had we had people from like back east fly over here just wow. to see that common crane. Wow, so, they like their know. birds. Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean beers are cool. Well, I don't know about flying around it's, the country. It's a deal that they do. It's it's called a life list. They try to. During their life, they try to get as many birds gotcha. as possible. Kind of their, so their kinda, personal bucket list. Kinda. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, okay. So, so, All right. It's kind of cool. So. Good for them. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. So, but um, so unfortunately, earlier bird tours are filled, but uh, we still have times for the dragonfly tours and the wildlife yeah. tours. And you know, you can uh, come if you want at six thirty. The bird, that's when the tour for the bird leaves. In case someone doesn't show up. Yep, or exactly. Stand by. If they, someone didn't show, we'll just put you in the van and go with them. Yeah. You go. And then uh, if you don't get on, then, uh, you know, you're yeah. up early for burritos and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. There's always a positive spin we can put on. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can watch the vendors set up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, also don't forget the, the kids' fishing pool is going to be out yeah, there. Yeah, the Game and Fish has done a wonderful job over the years. We partnered up with them, and uh, they've done a fantastic job. And they'll be doing uh, uh, the kids' uh, fishing pool mm -hmm. where they actually have live fish. Uh, fish yeah. that the kids catch um so success is uh, pretty it's good either be trout time. or 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 catfish and so um they always look forward to coming here sure uh, um and then um what else they're gonna have an archery range they're gonna uh -huh. have a, a scavenger a, hunt for uh, the kids well yeah not the game of fish will have the the that's uh, all part arch, of their deal yeah the archery They'll have a um, um, uh, a pellet like pellet gun trailer where they have a pellet okay. gun so you can shoot at. And then cool. they have a simulator. I think it's like a a, a little off road vehicle simulator. Oh, nice! So, so some out yeah, so they'll recreative be, they, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's their part. But then Pretty there's cute. also arts and crafts for the kids in the back. Uh, the okay. visitor center, a lot of a lot of activities. Good deal. Face painting. So for it's a really family oriented day. Mm -hmm. Everything's free except for the food. If you want to get hamburgers and yeah. hot dogs, that the uh, uh, the Boy Scouts here. Yeah, that's their fundraiser. Yep, so you're exactly. helping them out. So you're helping, so, exactly, so you're helping exactly, the Scouts out so. by, by buying a burger. And, yep. Well, you need fuel to walk around the t and tour and see and everything. Yep, so right. you exactly. need that fuel. Works so. out good. But um, again, if you want to reserve a tour time for either the Dragonfly Tour or Wildlife Tour, uh, you need to call either 575-625-4011 or 575-244-6256. If uh, Saturday's pretty busy for you, uh, they are offering uh, three different Dragonfly tour ties, times on Sunday morning yeah. as well, too. On Sunday, all we're doing is tours. There's yeah. no there's no exhibitors. There's yeah. nothing. All it is, is just, pool, all yeah, that's gone. Yeah. It's just the tours. And the, the tour guides, they're the ones that they, they enjoy doing this, and they said, hey, we'll hang around, and yeah. if people didn't get, you because know, in the past, we have gotten all our tours full. Yeah. Uh, this season, things are a little slower because people are still nervous about COVID. Sure. And they're still just trying to get back in the groove sure. of things. And let's face it, there's a lot yeah. going on this weekend. Yeah. There's there a, lot a lot of lot. different things happening <laughs> around town. So yeah. if you say there's nothing to do this weekend, that's your own fault because you could literally throw a rock and hit an yeah, activity or event yeah, around yeah, here, sure. whatever direction you throw it <laughs> it's in. It's a busy weekend. <laughs> so. And uh, the other thing the friends are going to do, I don't know, Don, if you want to mention something about the. Uh, uh, we have a blanket. drawing. Yeah, a drawing. And yeah, we got a drawing. Items. Uh, you can pick up uh, uh, your tickets for the drawing. This for the quilt? For Correct. the quilt. Yes. And yeah. this is a tradition, too, out at Dragon yep. Yeah, and it we've is. done this from 2001, and pretty much every year we've had a uh, someone make a quilt uh, with dragonflies on the quilt. And uh, I think it was Susie Flint made this last one. Right. And, um, She's made the last yeah, several of them. Yeah, so... Um, and, uh, anyway, it's really pretty. Uh, we had uh, just the other day I was at the visitor center. I saw somebody 
buying tickets because he saw the picture of the quilt. So. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's beautiful handmade stuff. And, it is. And I'm not going to tell nobody if you buy it and win it and uh, and then lie and be like, yeah, I made it myself. Cause you know, I won't out you. <laughs> I won't out you if you're doing it. Yeah. You know, but, but it's of that quality. You're like, but then again, you're putting yourself on the hook because once you do that, everyone was gonna be like, "Ooh, can you make me one of these?" Like, right, I don't know right, the first thing about quilt. There you go. <laughs> and, and before we even get to the quilt, we're gonna have the the same drawings, but we we draw for a bunch of other prizes. Good deal. As we work up to the quilt, that's awesome. the grand prize, you know. And, and by the way, all, the money for these tickets and everything all go back to the programs and projects there at Bitter Lake Wildlife. Right? Correct. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And the friends have been super supportive of the refuge. Uh, and if you're interested in joining the friends, you might want to contact Don, and uh, we can call us at the refuge, and yeah. we'll put you in touch with him. Uh, but we do. They do various things. I'm um, working on our nature butterfly trail, uh, organizing the festival, yeah. and they organize a thing called Cranes and Coco in October in November. At, right after that's the other big event that happens after Dragonfly. Festival. Correct. Yeah, Not, correct. Doesn't draw the crowds, yeah. but as far as coolness and popularity, it's right on par oh, there yeah. with yeah, uh, cool. with with the Dragonfly Festival. Yeah, but correct. Uh, volunteering does have its perks here or privileges here. Uh, you you yeah. do. That's part of the deal of being a friend is. You get to experience and and see parts of Bitter Lake that maybe the public doesn't generally Correct. get to be behind access the very often. behind the scenes and yeah. stuff. So, so you, yeah, so you so if you really love the outdoors and nature and love seeing that kind of stuff, it's kind of your own personal playground. Uh, you know, as far as I mean, you can't go out and do whatever you want, but as far as getting to experience uh, the full experience there, becoming a friend is a good yeah. way to do that. Oh, exactly. And we do. We will have membership forms. At the festival, so right. good just deal. Stop by our de- our. We'll have a table set up for the friends. Yeah. So stop by, and we'll take care. Give you drawing, drawing tickets and the membership forms. Perfect. So. We also have a large, uh, like a circus type tent full of exhibitors. Um, there's probably like 15 exhibitors. Okay. From uh, park service to BLM to mostly nature type stuff. Okay. And then, so a lot of information. Uh, yeah, and, exactly. And opportunities. Good, uh, around the surrounding area, cool. and then we are. Have about three or four uh, uh, bent arts and craft vendors too. So. Great. So yeah. really, there's a little something for everybody out yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. So uh, come Beaten. enjoy it. It's even the American Legion is going to be out there. Yeah, very good. Well, anywhere Don goes, it, it's right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but That's uh, right. but it's this Saturday. It's uh, it's been it's, coming. It's, it's coming. Going. This is the weekend. This Saturday, it's all happening out at Bitter Lake Wildlife Refuge. If you go to Friends of Bitter Lake dot org or right. you can go to www.fws.gov uh and that'll take you to the bitter lake Wildlife. well the better one the better one is uh, the um uh, look under national wild um look under bitter lake national wildlife Reserve. okay because there's two if you look under the fish and wildlife website it'll send you straight to the washington connection okay so you and they, do don't, they don't have, yeah they don't have as much information on okay. the festival so uh, Bitter Lake National Wildlife Refuge dot com. There you go. That'll get That'll you. That'll get you there. It's probably easy to remember. Correct. Too. And yeah. then the, there, if you get on our Facebook site, um, there's a lot of stuff on the Facebook. Good deal. So that way you can yeah. kind of plan and 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 plot your day out there yep. on Saturday, uh, yeah. especially if you only maybe only have half a day, you can come out and hang yeah. out. Then that's then right. We need to make sure you get the most bang for your buck Correct. while you're there. There you so. go. That, and Mike, there's another tour too that, that um, if you don't get on a dragonfly tour, they're the most. They're most. You can do both. You can actually do the dragonfly tour, mm-hmm. get off, and then go to you our plan it right. our yeah. wildlife tour, which uh, our biologist takes you behind the scenes, shows you how, how we manage the refuge. It's real interesting. There'll be yeah. anything from how we manage for our fish, how we manage for the endangered sunflowers, yeah. the birds that migrate. So it's a little more trickier than you think. Well, maybe maybe you've done the dragonfly tour in years past, and you're like, well, I'm going to try the wildlife tour this time yep. and, yeah. and, and try that one out, right. you know, or... So whatever whatever you whatever strikes your fancy, it's available to you. And it's interesting you mentioned if you if you've done it in the past because you know uh, I I'm close to the front desk of the visitor center and I overhear some of my volunteers talking to mm-hmm. and there's people that have come to the festival year after year. They go different oh, my experience kid. Yeah, every oh, time they, in it. They yeah. love it. So uh, yeah, if you haven't been there, it is pretty cool. Sure. Well, it's wildlife. Yeah. And yep. and, well, and we've had this conversation many times. You know. Uh, the first time you came out, the wildlife might have been doing a certain thing. You might come out this time, and it might be a whole different oh, thing going right, on yeah, there. Exactly, they, they, exactly. they don't live by schedules like, like we do. They, yep. They're very regimented, I'm sure, in their cycles of life and everything. But when it comes to when they eat, when they decide to do what they're going to do, it's on their schedule, not yours. Exactly. So. exactly. <laughs> different ideas. 
Again, one more time, 625-4011 or 244-6256. Those are the phone numbers to reserve your tour times. Uh, if you want to sign your children up to release a monarch butterfly or if you have any just questions about this weekend. Yep. Good deal. It. All right. Well, thank, thank you, guys. The French well, desk thank and you. get your drawing ticket. And get your raffle tickets for the drawing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Buy many of them because uh, yes. all of that helps. Uh, you, if, you know what? If you come out there and you're like, man, this place needs a blank, well, then go buy a raffle ticket and help put money towards that go. blank that you're talking <laughs> about. And if, you, and if you got the money, we can we can uh, find a way to use it. That's there. right. We'll name it after you and everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Okay. We'll see thank you, you so much. Mike. All right. Anytime. All right. Bye-bye. It's uh, 836. We're going to take a three-minute break, news and quick break, and then we're going to talk kids' arts program, their big event happening next Saturday. Don't go away. Now your Pecos Valley News update. I'm Jared Sorello. Four people injured Wednesday when an ambulance transporting a patient crashed and rolled over. It happened on U.S. Highway 70. State police blocked traffic through about 6 o'clock Wednesday night. Chavez County Sheriff's deputies said only one person's injuries were thought to be serious. No other vehicles were involved. It's good news for the coffers of Eddy County. Steady crude oil prices have led to increased oil and gas tax collections for county government. In July alone, the county bank rolled $8.9 million in taxes from the industry. That's up slightly from June revenue, according to Finance Director Roberta Smith. Nearly 19 million barrels of oil were produced from Eddy County in the month of July. And a New Mexico State District judge on Tuesday disqualified County Commissioner and Cowboys for Trump co-founder Coy Griffin from holding public office for engaging in what the judge called insurrection activities at the U.S. Capitol. You're up to date. I'm Jared Sorello. With the Wall Street Business Report, I'm Bill Alexander. The International Brotherhood of Teamsters says it has launched a new division to focus on unionizing Amazon employees. Amazon has for years discouraged attempts to organize. In a statement, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters called Amazon, quote, one of the world's most dangerous employers and said it would work to unite Amazon employees. United Airlines' third quarter revenue will be higher than it had expected due to strong summer travel demand. United said Wednesday that revenue will be 12% higher than in the same quarter of 2019. Separately, United says it will end flights at John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York unless it can expand operations. Lower oil prices, modest domestic gasoline demand, and a quiet hurricane season are combining to drive pump prices lower. The national average for a gallon of gas fell seven cents in the past week to three dollars and seventy-seven cents. For the Wall Street Business Report, I'm Bill Alexander in Washington. August is back to school month. It's an exciting time of year, but it's important to keep safety in mind as you send loved ones off to school. Central Valley Electric Cooperative would like to share some safety tips to keep in mind. Slow down and watch for school zones. Put your phone away. Don't get distracted. Stop for buses loading or unloading students. CVE wishes everyone a safe transition back to school. Remember to be safe and be smart this school year. Another week of football action is in the books. And coming up this Friday night, your Goddard Rockets return home to the Wool Bowl, squaring off against the Patriots of Miyamura High. Chris Deck and Chris Royball will have you covered with the pregame show beginning at 645 and kickoff at 7. Rockets versus the Patriots of Miyamura High. Friday night beginning at 645 on Fiero 106.1 FM and online at KSVPTV.com. Southeastern New Mexico's Sports Authority, then, now, and always. Your fingernails grow faster on your dominant hand. Not sure which is your dominant hand? Just wait. You'll nail it. Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 39 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us in studio this morning, of course, Amy McVeigh Tayus with the Historical Society for Southeast New Mexico back with us. Also, Angela Strange with the Kids Arts Program and the star of Saturday. <laughs> Next Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. <laughs> Melanie uh, Borbis. Good morning. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm excited. Good deal. So uh, if you're thinking star, what, what are we talking about? All right. All right. Let me let me back up. A little bit. <laughs> Reel everybody in. Uh, next Saturday, the, the 17th of September, uh, the Kids Arts Program, which is a part of the Roswell Community Little Theater. Uh, it's an education program where, where these children learn 
every aspect of theater, and they learn a lot of other stuff through theater, too. So it's not just the acting and thespian stuff, but sound and lighting and, and design and costuming and every aspect of it. But during all this, they also learn a lot about local, you know, Roswell and, you know, their community and history and things like that. So... Historical society said, you know, we, we kind of do that kind of stuff. That's kind of our bag, you know, <laughs> educating people and doing things. And so so uh, they, they partnered uh, for, for a couple of events here. Um, if you remember Graveside Manor, uh, that's an event where uh, folks go out to South Park Cemetery mm -hmm. and uh, you might meet, meet some young men and women that are standing by some graves dressed up in funny outfits. And then they start <laughs> talking. Uh, using all big words and stuff. I'm just kidding. But uh, no, they uh, no, they basically they're doing Chautauquas and, and introducing some some of uh, Roswell's forefathers to to uh, to people and some of the more famous, uh, I guess, current residents of the South Park Cemetery. Well, they said, all right, maybe the cemetery's a little morbid. We're gonna, you know, let's go take it to places people don't want to hang out in a cemetery on a Saturday for some reason. So. <laughs> So, so they said. So, so let's go to the historical society, and we'll do a living history event. And you had, uh, I guess, the first one was uh, what back in the spring. I guess it was. When was that? Uh, last, last fall. Fall. Last yeah. fall. Last fall. Was it been a year? Yes. No, uh, I thought it was like back in May or April. No. Or something. No. Where does that time Has go? it been that? Far? Oh man, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, this is last week, but um, it, it was a huge success and everything. And and that one. Oh, I wanted to be in that one, but I couldn't because well, I was doing another play. Uh, well, and that one was centered more on your husband. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I did the tour, but I don't quite remember it because there's a lot going on. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, they spotlight, the, the, of course, it's the J.P. White House at the museum and yeah. the, the White family and calls home. And so it was himself, J.P., and a, and a, and a few <laughs> of his friends <laughs> at the last one. But um, so we're doing it all over again. And uh, I guess this one... <laughs> I mean, we're still doing historical figures, but this is kind of from uh, Mrs. White's perspective yeah, a little is. bit here. So, <laughs> and of course, Melanie here plays Mrs. White on the seventeenth. Yes. So, so uh, we want to invite folks to come out. It's going to be a, a fun event for the entire family, kids, mom, dad, everybody. Come on out! It's going to be September seventeenth. Uh, officially gets underway at ten a.m. Uh, goes to about two. It. Um, uh, it, it's, it is a come and go event. They, they would like you to reserve a spot. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but if you forget or you're busy or whatever and you're like, oh man, it's 11 o'clock in Saturday, I forgot. Come on down anyway. We'll we'll find a way for you to meet Mrs. White here. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a will, there's a way. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But uh, but but um, I guess I've talked enough. Kind of give uh, kind of give the the parts I'm missing here on some of the the stuff that's happening Saturday. Uh, just make sure you go to uh, roswelltheater.com, mm -hmm. uh, T-H-E-R-E -E at the end. Yes. And um, you can reserve your time. That way you don't have to wait. And we may have a special family activity gift for the first 10 people or so okay. who do that. The early bird literally gets the worm yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> and I am worm, very proud of this girl right here. She has adjusted and come for multiple extra rehearsal things awesome. for me. Well, tell a little bit about yourself. Uh, what, you know, how old are you? Where do you, what do you, what, what are you doing when you're not uh, playing Mrs. White? All that good stuff. <laughs> well, I'm homeschooled, so I get more opportunities okay. to go to a lot of activities. I'm 14, and I usually don't do a lot of extrovert things, but I'm really happy doing theater, and it's a lot of fun being able to help talk about historical figures in Roswell. Okay. So it's really fun to do. So, so did you have any kind of theater desires prior to being a part of CAPS? Or was well, it just something you said, I I'll do this, and then uh, <laughs> you got bit by the bug, so to speak? Well, um, for a while, I was really nervous, and I didn't like doing anything theater because I didn't want to be on stage. But sure. my friends started going, so I was like, hey, maybe I'll give this a try. And Peer pressure I gets you every time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's actually really fun getting to be on stage and making stories for people or even doing historical society and telling people about stories about people who have lived here before. Yeah. It's so a lot cool. of fun. So so you really so the history is kind of what drew you in. You're kind yeah. of like you peel back a layer and you're like this is kind of neat. This is <laughs> yeah. something I didn't know and then and then you peeled back another layer and now you're <laughs> full on just in a rabbit hole and yeah. Out. yeah, I get you. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so I got to ask is, um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What, Ooh, okay. what are some of the traits 
of Mrs. White that you kind of re- admire you yourself? In, or is there anything you read about her or learned about her? You're like, you know, maybe that's something I can adopt in my own personal life. Yeah, well, there's not a lot of information on her since she's too local. But we did get some information from her granddaughter, Mary Lou. Okay. And so some she, family yeah. uh, stories and in history. And she seems like a very nice person. She loved. She had a cook, but she loved to help in the kitchen. She made a lot of food for her husband. Okay. When her grandkids stayed over, she would um, play with them, and she would tell stories. She would sometimes go and sleep with them, and she was just really fun. Just ran the household. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She made sure that it was always fun. She had guests over. She um, was very friendly, and it says that um, when she was older, some of the ladies that lived near her come mm-hmm. and moved in with her. Oh, wow. So <laughs> yeah. She- so almost she, she was kind of like the host. Kinda yeah, she the, was the, the host. She wanted to make sure everyone had fun. She was yeah. very friendly. And then uh, just, yeah, exactly. That person that, you know, it, it, it's it, usually it's the mom just because yeah. it is. But <laughs> not always. But usually that person in the household that's the glue. That just, yes. like, they, if they go away for a day or two, it's just all false. Oh, apart, yeah. You know? My mom, she had to go on a... <laughs> business trip yeah. and she's she's only gone for three days but i already miss her so much yeah so uh so, so you can relate yes i can Good deal. <laughs> so um I, i'm curious before doing this project did you even know who she was or know anything at all about no, her or, no. you know for like you know some of your homeschool stuff if you had learned anything about local roswell history before doing this or did this all come through this project well, I did know about Historical Society before, but I didn't know a lot of the characters. I knew it was a place that had a lot of, like, pictures. And, History and, stuff. Yeah, but I didn't really know a lot of the characters. I've been there once, and I did a tour, but that was when I was younger. Okay. So I don't remember much of anything. Gotcha. So, uh, but now you're pretty well versed in the house yeah. and everything else. I'm curious, what's your favorite room in the house? My favorite room? Oh, I love the whole house. It just, I love the decorations. I don't know. It's either got to be the bathroom on the first floor or the bed, or not the bedroom, but like the dressing room. Mm-hmm. It had a lot of like 1920s clothes, and it, I love that fashion. So you like the, yeah, you just like the seeing yes. the, the lifestyle stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, uh, yeah, that toilet. You ever want to pull the. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. It's tempting, isn't it? <laughs> you always want to pull the, yeah. the, the chain. And he's looking like, no, please don't anybody do yeah, that. Yeah, no one do that. But every time you see it, you want to. Yes. <laughs> I, I didn't know if that was just me. I just walked into the wall. Let me look, and I want to tell this thing. And the tile was also amazing. Like, it was all pink. It was kind of short, though. Like, everything was a little bit shorter than in a regular house, but it was still really beautiful. Yeah. Well, we were shorter people back Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I got to ask, as a lady, uh, one of the things that uh, is cool to see in there, uh, a turn-of-the-century type relic, uh, is the the, the hair dryer in there, the women's beauty parlor hair dryer. (laughs) How much money would it take for you to put your head in that thing? Oh, I don't know. (laughs) I don't want to get electrocuted. Looks a little nervous, doesn't it? (laughs) Feel like you committed a capital crime when you get in that thing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh but that was the way of the world back then. Yeah, it you was. Know? And I imagine that was a high luxury item mm-hmm. for the day yes. too. And that's something that, and I think, especially children your age and things like that. I think when you go through and tour that house, and, and let's face it, that house was was elite. For its time, yes, I mean, it's that's high society. The the best luxuries available of the period were in that home, and so things that we look at is like, oh my gosh! But that toilet you're talking with the pulch, you don't realize how how much of a luxury that was for yeah. some people during that era to have something like that. You know, most of them were still going to the bathroom in a in a little shed with a moon do, moon on the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to have that. And just so to me, I, I think that's the cool part is just seeing, you know, this is what high society looked mm-hmm. like at the turn of the century. Uh, 19, not the new one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so uh, uh, to me, that's cool. So I, I'm glad you kind of, because it looks like you kind of dig, because I'm that same guy. Like you go in the kitchen, you open the shelves to look at all the old products in the pantry and things like that. And it, and, it just blows my mind that this is what they use. And I'm like, whoa, that looks so cool. Yeah. Do you think you could uh, survive in that world? You know, I know you've lived modern time and 
cell phones are stuck to our hands and everything else now. But honestly, if I didn't live. In this time, I would live in that time because it just, I love it. Yeah. I love how simple it kind of was. So I'm kind of curious. What would be your, like, activities, things you would enjoy doing during that time period? You obviously you can't do today. like you know, Yeah, no phones, no laptops. Yeah, people today, it's like, oh, I like to, you know, get on my yeah. phone and do this or chat with my friends on Facebook or yeah. Snapchat. I mean, I know I'm probably, old. I would probably have a lot of get-togethers, just have a lot of people come and talk and okay. have fun. A lot and of bring, parlor, uh, yeah. parlor entertaining and things yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. I'd also love to to read because reading is actually quite nice when you don't have any distractions because sure. you're like oh but i have to do this and that and if you just have peace you can read and there's a lot less distractions in that house i mean yeah. there's not a tv going 24 7 or telephone <laughs> ringing or or uh, any of that kind of stuff so yeah, yeah. very cool <laughs> now now living in that home would you uh would you like to live you know could you get used to living oh, in a I home like get that? Used to that that was very nice i walked through the whole house and i'm still amazed with all the stuff that's there all right now now playing mrs white it's amazing house but now that you're mrs white guess who has to clean cook <laughs> Oh no! All, do all the work in that big yeah. ginormous house. Well, I'm sure she, I'm sure JP White wouldn't do it. I'm just oh, saying. No. <laughs> I did. I did find out she did have a cook that would cook for her, but she still loved to go and help cook. And she made like one of her staples was fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and homemade lemonade. That should be everybody's staple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't live to twelve, but it would be good. Oh yeah. <laughs> But uh, well, cool. So I'm glad. It sounds like you really embraced and loved, uh, and 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 really kind of. Once you got involved here, you really started, you know, peeling back and saying, "This is cool stuff. I yeah. really like it." And, <laughs> and so I think a lot of other people experience the same thing you are, Melanie. Is yeah. is, is the experiencing these things to that you know maybe read about or you might know very little about, but when you see the history firsthand, when you walk into that home and you see the pillars and you see the big staircase and you see these different rooms and stuff. And that that's, this is, that's it. This is, yeah. this is the people, you know, a hundred years ago were walking in this, you know, because this is where they live. They're going to the bathroom. They're going to the, you know, mm-hmm. to the parlor. They're going to bed at night. They're living their lives in this home. And, yeah. and it's pretty cool to, to, to kind of, you know, think what was going on. Like you sit in a room and just like, I wonder what a typical night was like yeah. in this room, you know, back at the turn <laughs> of the century. And it's one thing to go to a museum and read about all this history, even in a bigger city. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing to go to like a museum and have people actually talking about their character and playing them. Because then you can see maybe what they were like and their activities and mm-hmm. hobbies. That living museum. That yeah. real actual, it's not just a dusty uh, relic sitting on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, there's there's like a meaning and a story behind it. Yeah, telling you what about it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so for folks, um, like I said, it's from ten until uh, about two. Um, they're asking to, to to reserve a time. Uh, again, you can go to the Roswell Community Little Theater's website, uh, Roswell Theater T H E A T R E dot org, and go there and uh, reserve your your time. Mm-hmm. Well, by the way, you can get tickets for their upcoming show while you're there too, if you want yes. to you know, yeah. purchase it. I get the Christie's unexpected guest. Okay. Yeah, heard so, a little bit of rehearsal. It's going to be awesome. I think it's a big one. They're pretty excited. Uh, I know the uh, the directors, and we were talking with them a couple months ago about the previous show, and and big Agatha Christie fans. So they were very <laughs> excited to get That's into awesome. digging into this project. So, but uh, but definitely get your tickets for that. But yeah, mm-hmm. get your tickets. Um, it's it's asking for five dollar donation. Yes. Um, uh, and again, that's money that uh, goes to kids arts program, goes to the historical society. So it's going back to doing more stuff like this. That's what that money yeah. is being used for. So. We want to encourage individuals, if they're not able to attend for any reason, to consider um, contacting at the museum or contacting the CAPS program. We would love to have pay-it-forward tickets for people oh, sure. that can afford to. We're still taking donations to allow this event to happen. Okay. But behind all events is a lot of expenses to Absolutely. make this happen. Everybody that purchases a ticket will get a goodie bag. Yes. Amazing silent auction items. So that, Listen, that in eats itself, all the goodies in there. I don't know. Uh, John May and Donna Blake Birchall will be on the porch um, right. signing books, and those books let's are do, available. Unless Mrs. White kicks them off. That, <laughs> it is her porch. They better be. <laughs> and or shenanigans little, out on the porch. Uh-huh, you spill lemonade, we're going to have a problem. A little birdie told me John LeMay's birthday's the day before, so he uh-huh. better behave himself, uh-huh. or she might kick him off. Oh, That's yeah. right. <laughs> Put him in the hair curler thing as his birthday. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
one thing, and th- one thing we haven't talked about, Angela worked so hard, is after we get to experience this tour, there's a lot of hands-on activities in the archives. That, yeah, might, that might be worth it. That's when, yeah, please don't, please <laughs> don't win-win. leave when, when you're done going to the museum. Walk right next door to the archives field. There's a bunch of projects that the kids will love. Uh, I think the adults mm-hmm. might get a few kick out of one of these. Two. I think they enjoyed it more than the kids last year. Yeah, <laughs> You're not doing it right. Give it to me. <laughs> and there, there's even going to be something to fill the tummy. Yeah. Right? Yes. Oh. Yes, we always have to have food. So My committee was like, what food is it going to be this time? <laughs> we should have started with the food. That's a, that's, I was going to say, maybe Mike rule. will show up. Yeah. See, I didn't know if he was going to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> we, said, we said food. We said right. food, you know. He's like, I heard there's food. <laughs> food is always the best part. <laughs> that's how I walk into every event. But I hear there's food. Yes. <laughs> Get all free food. It tastes good. <laughs> but uh, there is also another uh, fundraising uh, yes. fun way to help out too. Uh, if you would like to, uh, I guess you're you're, you're going to win something regardless. But if you want to play a little uh, uh, lady luck and try your lady luck a little bit, there is an <laughs> opportunity for you to uh, purchase or uh, break into uh, a safety deposit box that may or may uh, that may uh, so it's it's a fun little thing little game that they're doing and uh, you know you can win some cool little prizes and things but but it's kind of set up like uh, you know the old uh, vault that's been stuck to you with the safety deposit box that hasn't been opened in a long time and what treasures lie in these safety deposit boxes so if you want to have a little other way to help out both organizations here and having a little fun and Win some more swag for yourself. Uh, please uh, come by and uh, purchase a safety deposit box or two to. Uh, and you to, can to do you can order. It's a raffle okay. set up, right. and you can do that online as well. When you go on to get your tickets, you can also buy raffle tickets right there online oh, or at the on the day of the event. Okay, perfect. So whichever way you do it, or do both. You know, get get one yeah. or two online, and then while you're there, get another one or something like that. <laughs> but get you raffle tickets. But again, September seventeenth, not this Saturday, next Saturday. It's going to all be happening at the uh, Historical Society for Southeast New Mexico, 200 uh, North Lee Street. It'll be the J.P. White House there on the corner of 2nd and Lee, and then the archives facility right next door. I mean, literally, you park in the middle, and then you go one way to the house, the other way to the uh, archives facility there. You yep. can't miss it. So, yeah, Normally, when you come, you park in the center, but because mm-hmm. we have all the activities going oh, on, yeah, we keep yeah, everybody yeah. safe, so oh, we're going to be might... parking along the side of the road. Gotcha. And I usually there's a little parking across the street there, yes. too. Yes, right, uh, right, right, uh, right behind all subs, and then on the north side of the archive facility. Yeah. Uh, put so this way. We'll, we'll get you a spot. That's you exactly know. right. Somebody so. like Mike Winters, look for that's right. Look for <laughs> crazy neon shirts. The guy in fishnet stockings and a t-shirt. <laughs> right here, you know, so. <laughs> but um, and of course, if 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 you have any questions or anything, like I said, go to uh, check out the uh, Roswell Community Little Theaters uh, website. Roswell uh, NMHistory dot org mm-hmm. is the website for the historical site that you can check out. Roswell Theater T H E A T R E dot org for the uh, Community Little Theater. But either website will get you information on this. And But if you want to learn more about other historical society things, maybe go to the historical society side. If you want to learn more about some of the upcoming shows and things for, the, uh, I almost said CAPS, Community Little Theater, <laughs> uh, then, then uh, go to the to the website there and check it out. So, good deal. Is there anything we missed? Anything we wanted well, to get? When I walked into the building, I noticed that there was a sign that said, this is a J.P. White building, this but I'm not the, sure. It is. It is. It, mm-hmm. well, he didn't cool. live here. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> They didn't live here, but, no. but yeah, they named the building after. That is cool. Isn't that amazing? So I love that. I was Part almost going to do a joke on you. It's like, no, 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 that's not <laughs> J.P. White. That's that's Jerry Peter White. He's a different guy. <laughs> <laughs> he does say it's like that. Oh. So watch out <laughs> We don't talk about him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Same guy. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely come on out. Have some fun. It should be a, a good time. And, and of course, if you have children that, that you know, uh, hey, how do I get involved with with the CAPS program and things? Come and learn about it. Come out yes. and learn. Yeah. And you'll be happy to, to tell yes. you more about Absolutely. it. And uh, tell you when the next classes start and all that good stuff. So uh, if you want to learn more about that or... Mm-hmm. If you're interested in being a part of Community Little Theater, come on out and uh, talk to them. They can put you in touch with the right people to, you know, uh, even if you're like, I don't want to audition. I don't want to be on the stage. No. If you no. need help with sound and lighting or making sure the actors get where they need to get to um, behind the scenes, then uh, they, they're always looking for those volunteers. Or you can help with the set. We always need help with the set. Yeah, that's, that's true. Awesome. 
That's true. Uh, usually somebody's moving or knocking something around, and you got to fix yep. it and do all that. So. Very good. Well, thank you guys. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming in. Enjoy. We look forward to seeing uh, Mrs. White here. And uh, Yeah, I'm excited to see all the people that come. Uh, do, you, do you have to get like a lot of layers for the dress? No, thankfully, no. Okay. I know, just like, one dress. Corsets and bonnets. And, oh, you know, and, you know, it's pretty soon it's like, hey, you'll be able to breathe someday. You don't need to breathe right now. <laughs> Very good. All right. It is 9 o'clock. You're listening to 106.5 Rousel's Talk FM, K-E-N-D, or Rousel, New Mexico. A profound concern, and I think that that is absolutely right. Hoping for the best, but let's be completely candid now, braced for the worst. It may be that there will be a recovery, but there has been a gradual deterioration in her health from everything that we can glean, from everything that we can observe over these recent months. Members of the royal family traveling to be with the 96-year-old monarch who is said to be resting comfortably at her summer residence, Balmoral Castle, in Scotland. On the heels of a horrific crime, the murder of young mother Eliza Fletcher, now Memphis having to deal with another evil, a day-long shooting spree. It left four people dead, several others injured. This is no way for us to live, and it is not acceptable. Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland notes a suspect, 19-year-old Ezekiel Kelly, was previously charged with attempted first-degree murder, but pled guilty to a lesser charge of aggravated assault. He was sentenced to three years, but only served 11 months in prison. And was released less than six months ago. Police say Kelly is the gunman who drove around Memphis yesterday shooting at people. Day-long rampage forcing residents to shelter in place and spreading terror across the city. Another day of intense heat across the West, including in California, where there's still concern for the possibility of rolling blackouts. On Wall Street, the Dow is up 171 points, NASDAQ ahead 89. More on these stories at townhall.com. Charlie Dombeck here from Key City Capital. As a practicing CPA for nearly 30 years, I have found that 80% of your ability to grow your wealth is dependent upon two factors, taxes and investment performance. At Key City Capital, we improve investment performance by diversifying capital into off-market investment opportunities in passive rental real estate and alternatives like asset-backed lending. We recover dollars that clients unnecessarily pay in the form of income taxes, creating a lifetime annuity of savings. We are a sponsor of passive, affordable, single and multifamily residential rental investments, which are located in Sunbelt landlord-friendly states. These investments are the top choices in a rising interest rate and inflationary environment. They represent a store of value protecting your capital from market volatility. Learn how we at Key City Capital can help you ultimately grow your wealth rapidly. Connect with me at keycitycapital.com or give me a call at 817-912-1569. The Philippine president has approved the removal of face masks in public more than two years after the law was imposed because of COVID-19. The Philippines and Myanmar are one of the last countries in Southeast Asia to lift the compulsory wearing of masks outdoors. Authorities have said the change will take effect as soon as President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. issues an executive order. The Philippines Interior Minister has said a study has shown that lifting mask wearing requirements in other countries has not led to a surge in new infections. However, authorities are still urging citizens to maintain a distance and wash hands regularly. I'm Karen Chamas. The death toll from a fire at a karaoke parlor in southern Vietnam has risen to 32 and some parts of the building still inaccessible more than a day later. The fire that began late Tuesday trapped workers and customers inside that multi-story venue. News and analysis at townhall.com. COVID-related emails exchanged within the Biden administration may soon be released. The Biden administration and Anthony Fauci were ordered to surrender all emails regarding COVID and social media censorship. The lawsuit to release the emails was filed by the attorneys general of Missouri and Louisiana. It's an effort to reveal a coordinated effort to censor information the government did not approve of during the COVID pandemic. The AGs believe the White House pushed social media platforms for years to censor viewpoints and speakers at odds with the left. Tasha Stevens reporting. 
Along with the extreme heat, wildfires continue raging across California. There have been evacuations, many homes have been destroyed, and at least four deaths are blamed on the wildfires, which are being fed by hot, tinder-dry conditions across the state. Once again on Wall Street this hour, the Dow is up 172 points. More on these stories at townhall.com. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? I promise you, whatever scum did this, not one man on this force will rest for one minute until he's behind bars. Now let's grab a bite to eat. Yeah, come on. I feel the hot wind on my shoulder, and the touch of a world that is older. I hit the switch and the world is Broadcasting live from high atop the J.P. White Building in downtown Roswell, New Mexico. It's Mornings with Mike Winters on 106.5 Roswell's Talk FM. Is that what I sound like when I talk? (laughs) Now, here's your host, Mike Winters. And good morning. It is six minutes after nine o'clock. Welcome to our number Three. Chris and Bernals. Uh Mornings with Mike Winters. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> right here on 106.5 Roswell's Talk FM. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hope all of you are having a wonderful day thus far. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I started last hour kind of looking, uh, seeing, you know, about the updates about the Queen. Uh, at least I'm looking on the, I've got the Fox app up on the TV up here. And uh, no updates there, it looks like. Just uh, still on, on watch, I guess. But all the royal families coming in to, to London there. So uh, it sounds like it's... And like I said last hour, they, uh, that Operation London Bridge or whatever it is that they enact when the Queen is has passed, uh, according to reports on Twitter, some of that started. Like if the website, they've gone black and the dark suits for the... Uh, announcers and everything are set up and all that stuff so uh it sounds like they're in place for to start literally the plan operation london bridge when she dies this is some plan they've had in place for a while now and they're starting to uh implement some of those so yeah we'll see we'll see uh, hopefully i'm wrong and she makes a speedy recovery and she's back i mean she's she is kind of Teflon in that way where, you know, she's been around since oh, yeah, last hour I saw Winston Churchill of... pretty much. <laughs> I mean, she's she's been around a long time. And uh, so She's probably going to be in a wheelchair or something. Uh, well, the way everything's saying it's not like, already. I don't know what what the medical issue is per se. I haven't heard what what the actual what they're dealing with, whether it's a cancer or a heart issue or a brain issue. I have no idea. No idea what the medical but whatever it is, it, it sounds like it's it's not good. I mean, how old is she now? Ninety six, I think. Yeah, like. I don't know. It's it's probably all over the place. It's not even a medical thing at that point. Well, yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, it's like, what is she? She's she's ninety six. What 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 do you want? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what'd you die of? I'm ninety six. <laughs> that's what I died of. <laughs> Like the last hour, I saw a bunch of people like you know already making fun of it on Twitter. Oh stuff. well, it's that's the world we live in. Everyone's gonna be. <laughs> yes, it is too soon. By the way, <laughs> people are like too soon on like, those. Yes. Well, yes, no, people are already like it. confirming it too. Like you know. Well, can, uh, well, this like is Princess over- Diana and the Queen meeting in the afterlife. Oh know? yeah, those these people have been waiting for years to do these <laughs> jokes. They just got to get them out. Some jump the gun. Um, I it, it it's I don't know. She's a pretty beloved lady. I think anything you do is going to be, uh, uh, <laughs> anything you do is going to, you know, probably not fare well. You're going to look like a, a bad person, uh, which you probably are if you're going to do it. <laughs> I get, right. I mean, I get it. People like to be funny and witty and think they're cool yeah. by doing this stuff, but it never comes off that way. Anytime you're trying to, 
it blows up in your face. Just, uh-huh. just, just a tip. You know, you got to let it happen organically. That's the tr- trick to being funny. I, I can already tell Clyde Lewis is going to make a, a show about this tonight. Well, he probably has a conspiracy that she was poisoned or something. Mm-hmm. That would be my guess. Or, yeah. An untimely death. I'm like, again, she's 96 years old. Well, <laughs> I think it. sometime during the weekend was the 20th anniversary of, or 30th anniversary of uh, Princess Diana's death. Ah. Or something like that. It was an anniversary. Yes, it is. An absolute coincidence. And it's been 30 years. Yeah, it has been 30 years since she died. Yeah. It's, we're getting old. Yeah. We are getting old. Yeah. And yeah, so and he was like telling a story about like how, you know, the dragon and the rose and how it, you know, relates to that and all these, all these things that have, you know, combined through history and met at this point, you know. <laughs> Drugs are bad, kids. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's proof right there. Uh, but, yeah, so we'll see. We're, I guess the world is on watch now. I don't um, take drugs. <laughs> I don't do drugs. For the record. <laughs> He's like, I just do cocaine and heroin, but I don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, have you ever seen the movie The Jerk? Yes. You have? The Steve Martin movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good yeah. for you, man. I'm Usually most I tell people your age or younger and they look at me like, what? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, no, the jerk. No. <laughs> you, sir, are talking. When he's moving out, <laughs> there's that scene where he goes, I'm just going to, he goes, it's all I need is, is yeah. this. And then he grabs like, and this flower, and that's all I need is and the lamp to, uh, is and the my... remote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's one of those people, so. Uh, let me give you the rundown for this hour of the show. We'll get you up to date with the weather here in just a few minutes. Uh, and then uh, about quarter after or so, uh, we're going to uh, talk with uh, the folks from the Roswell Humane Society. Crystal Noble with us. Give us an update on uh, what's going on over at the Humane Society. And then uh, later on, we'll get you up to date with uh, news of the local variety, along with your Wall Street business update and whatever else we can come up with for this hour of the show. Like I said, it's a busy weekend. Um, we were just talking Dragonfly Festival. Don't forget, uh, Roswell Ford's got their big car show happening on Saturday out at the uh, Wool Bowl. That's going to get underway about 10 a.m. out there. And uh, they're going to have a ton of cool cars. It's it, it. They did this last year at Ford, and they literally outgrew it. It, it was after one year, they, they they just couldn't do it at the Ford house because it was just it's too big for that. So it's here at the Wool Bowl this year. But beginning about 10 a.m. till about 2 uh, on Saturday, they're going to have the big car show out at the Wool Bowl. Definitely want to check that out. Um, of course, Richland's got their big barbecue event going on as well. Dragonfly Festival also happening on Saturday. One other thing I do want to uh, put on your radar as well with uh, the – the Patriots Day weekend here with uh, 9-11 on Sunday. Uh, Saturday, they're going to have a, a 911 uh, uh, remembrance event at the Roswell Mall this Saturday beginning at 11 a.m. Uh, it'll be right in the middle of the mall, right smack dab in the middle beginning at 11. Uh, speakers will be uh, Mayor Tim Jennings, uh, also Chief of Police Phil Smith, uh, opening prayer by Jim Ridgway. They'll also have uh, performances by uh, Malaya Juarez, Miss Teen uh, New Mexico, uh, Mary Gonzalez, Dwayne and Jill, Jack and Julie Ferguson with Mark Parham, uh, Howard and Nellie Becker, Dolores Walker, Billy Joe Montoya as well. If you have any questions, want some more information about that event, you can reach out to Bob Power at 575-910-4648. Again, that's 575-910-4648. But uh, the event will be happening this Saturday 11 a.m. out at the Roswell Mall. All right, it is uh, 14 minutes after 9 o'clock. Let's go ahead and get you up to date on the weather. I'm meteorologist Steve Hamilton with your Pecos Valley weather. About the same for the next couple of days with high pressure parked over eastern New Mexico and the western panhandle. That'll take us into the low 90s for the afternoon high today and sunny few clouds overnight, low 60s, and then we'll hit the mid-90s with a sunny day coming up on Friday. Saturday, sunshine with a few clouds and low 90s, and then a lot cooler with a few showers Sunday, 85. That's your latest forecast. I'm meteorologist Steve Hamilton. Thank you, Steve. Currently 71 degrees here in Roswell. Humidity is at 59%. 
winds are calm at the moment. Uh, they're talking uh, another day of haze, widespread haze up in your brain. Uh, partly cloudy otherwise today, high of 91 with south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, the widespread haze up in your brain until 10 o'clock tonight. Then it starts wearing or, or, or spreading or whatever they call it, uh, unhazing up. I don't know. Uh, mostly cloudy with an overnight low of 64 south winds 5 to 10 miles per hour Friday. Uh, sunny. I'm sorry, partly cloudy, uh, high of 92, so uh, right still holding the low 90s. Uh, winds will be out of the south, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow night, skies will be mostly cloudy uh, with an overnight low of 68 degrees. South winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. For the weekend, Saturday, with all that stuff going on, looks like weather will be pretty good. Mostly sunny, highs uh, 89, so right around 90 there, not too bad. Uh, winds will be out of the north at around 10 miles per hour. Saturday night, we are looking at a 20% chance of showers, uh, mainly after 7 p.m. They say some of those storms could produce heavy rainfall, mostly cloudy with an overnight low of 65 degrees. Sunday, when you're uh, nestled in your sweet little couches watching football, uh, there's a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly for the afternoon. Uh, otherwise, And they do say, once again, some of those storms could produce some heavy rainfall, uh, partly cloudy, high of 84 on Sunday, 30% uh, chance of rain Sunday night. Uh, with that, some storms could produce heavy rain caveat. And then Monday, uh, partly cloudy, high of 88. There is a slight chance of some rain early in the day, but partly cloudy for the rest. All right, it is 16 minutes after 9 o'clock. We're going to take a three-minute break, and then we will talk with Crystal Noble, talking Roswell Humane Society on the other side. Don't go away. Jennifer here from Trustmark Roofing, and I know you've heard me say that you can trust Trustmark, but I want you to know what that looks like in real life. A few years ago, we installed a beautiful new roof for an older woman who was recently widowed. She was an artist and colors were really important to her. So when she said she didn't like the color of a brand new roof, we took that seriously. She had picked the color and signed off on it, but I just kept thinking, if she's going to walk into her house every day and be disappointed, then we're just going to redo it. So we did. We ripped that beautiful new roof off and replaced it with a slightly different color and she was thrilled. Yes, it cost us quite a bit of money to make her happy, but I want you to know you can trust Trustmark to make it exactly right every time. If you have any roofing needs, call us at 575-755-ROOF or find us online at TrustmarkRoofPros.com. Trustmark Roofing, we put people first. Hi, I'm Dr. Keanu Carabelli Dental. Same day smiles are what we do. My passion is helping patients chew, talk, and live with confidence. That's why I'm one of the few doctors in the U.S. who can create beautiful same-day smiles with the latest digital implant technology. This procedure is life-changing. Just ask Sean. Hi, I'm Sean. <laughs> I've been that voice that you've heard on the radio for most of my life, but I'm also a dad to two amazing kids. I've had a million reasons to smile, but in all my old pictures, I was never smiling. Truth is that life of improper care and being dealt a bad hand genetically that left me practically with no teeth. It affected everything from the way I ate, the way I talked, and of course how I interacted with people. And that's where Dr. Keon and Carabelli stepped in. They eased my fears. They explained every step of the process in a way that I could understand, and they made me feel almost like I was part of the team. And now, I can't stop smiling. I have so much more confidence, and I love looking in the mirror now. I can't explain how much of a difference Dr. Keon's dental implant process made for me. Our team can help you find your smile, too. Come see us at Carabelli Dental, 575-622-4455. Peter Marshall once prayed before the U.S. Senate this, Lord, we thank you that we come to you just as we are, but remind us that we dare not leave as we came. I wish our political leaders took this to heart, but more importantly, we need to take this to heart. Over and over through the New Testament, Jesus encounters sinful, messed up, hurting people and shows them compassion and grace. However, he never ignores or condones their plight. He calls them to be better, to move beyond where they are and who they are. Jesus encountered all kinds and led them to be better. There were fishermen and tax collectors, lepers and demon-possessed, adulterers and sinners. Wherever you are, whatever you've done, you can move beyond it by the grace that God gives us through Christ. Maybe you've been a follower of Christ in the past and have lost your way. You can return to him and be more and do more and lead the life that he calls you to lead. Praise God that his forgiveness never ends. We invite you to join us to learn how to be better with him 
than we are on our own. Join us at the Country Club Road Church of Christ for worship at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Located on the corner of Country Club in Washington in Roswell. The average American spends 2.5 days a year looking for lost items. We aren't sure how long Europeans and Asians look for lost stuff. We lost the list. Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 19 minutes after 9 o'clock. And joining us in the studio this morning from the Roswell Humane Society, Crystal Noble back with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Nice. Enjoying this nice morning. It's nice and not too hot, not too... A Goldilocks. No, but you feel the humidity, though. Yeah, well, anytime we get any kind of rain chance, it... it we get one drop of rain and we get 100% humidity yep. with no rain. And 30,000 mosquitoes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mosquitoes are horrible, and um, we typically are not a hot spot for heartworm, but this is a good time. This to... is a good time of the year to make sure that your animals are on the heart guard. If they haven't been heartworm tested, get them heartworm tested. To yeah, get them on the heart guard. Before you can feed them the heart guard, yes, you have to get te- because if they have heartworm and you give them the heart guard, it's It'll going kill to them. kill them. Uh, there is another treatment for the dog if the dog already has heartworm. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so you and do depending have to on tests. the stage depends on what the treatment is. Okay, so uh, please just don't because I, I don't even know if you can buy heart guard without a vet's. Uh, no, you have to have a prescription for yeah. it because you have to have a valid negative test. Gotcha. Um, but we are not typically a hot spot. We've had a lot more moisture recently than yeah. we typically do. Which has enhanced the mosquitoes times a thousand. I always gave it to our dog, you know, even though it wasn't a hot spot, but it was because it's it really also, easy to it give it. It covers to. other things other than heartworm. It helps with fleas and ticks okay. and deworming. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the easiest medicine to give an animal. I'm telling you, my dogs are like, hmm. Yeah, I, I, the biggest problem I had with it was only giving her one. She wanted more than one. I'm like, no, not for another month, dude. You know? <laughs> <laughs> one a month. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah, that's uh, that one's very easy. But So a simple trick for that is, you know, find their other favorite treat, give them one of their favorite treats, okay. give them the heart guard, and then give them another favorite treat right after. So, therefore, they've received multiple treats but right. only one heart In guard. In their head, they, they feel like they got they got their prize. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, just out of curiosity, um, is there... With a dog that is suffering from heartworm, is there any signs or is it unnoticeable? So the beginning signs typically are like lack of energy. Okay. Um, but also sometimes there are no beginning signs. Okay. That's why it's important to get this test. It you is just very can't... important. Um, and a lot of the times, um, sometimes heartworm mimics congestive heart failure. Okay. Because the heartworms are basically... Attacking the heart. There. They're in the yeah. heart, attacking the heart. So they are essentially congestive heart failure, just not the typical type that we deal with, like sure. with Lasix and right. other treatments for that. Um, but in reality, um, watching your pet's energy level, listening to their breathing, watching how they breathe, um, sometimes they'll start to develop like um, a deeper chest um, like dachshunds, how they have a deep barrel chest, uh-huh. like they'll get like a fat pouch. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because the heart is swelling. Oh, wow. So, okay. That makes sense. But so, so please don't, like if your friend gives you some and here's, I got some left, don't, don't give yeah, it to no, your dog. Wait, don't. Wait Unless until you that have test a is test. Done. Because yeah. one of the preventatives that helps keep heartworms dead can kill your dog if your dog has heartworms. Gotcha. So, Basically, the treatment for heartworm is ivermectin. Okay. And um, I believe doxycycline. Okay. Um, but those are IV injectables. Gotcha. So you can't just go buy them over the counter and give it to your animal. Right. You have to, they have to be administered a certain time. Sure. And depending on the stage of heartworms, because they have different stages. If it's in the final stage, it's not treatable. Gotcha. So if it's in the first two stages, you are. The third Iffy, it's iffy, okay. And the fourth is no treatment. So if you start seeing signs, get them to the vet the earlier the better. Think yeah. of heartworm as cancer. Gotcha. You have stage one and stage four. Gotcha. So you want to catch this before it's in stage one. Got it. Okay. Got it. So just keep that stuff in mind. And, and the easy thing is just make an appointment with your vet. Have them screen for a heartworm. It's and then, not expensive. Yeah. 40, 50 bucks a test, you know, min- minus taxes or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, 
you test them once, and then once you start them on the heart guard, you don't have to retest them again. Yeah, as long as you keep them steady on yes, the heart guard. Yes, they have to stay on the heart guard. You know, you can't have any lapses. Right. And it's, and it's really... one a month. One one cookie, basically, a month. Mm-hmm. And you get. buy it in a six-pack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a doggy six-pack. That's right. Um, you buy it in a six-pack, so you buy it for six months at a time. And then you have that coverage for that time. Um, it's one of the easiest things to do, mm-hmm. one of the cheapest things to do to help prolong your animal's life. Yeah, absolutely. And and so please, uh, like like you said at the beginning here, yeah, we're not in a high uh, area for that to be a, a, a constant problem. But with the humidity, with the things, uh, it's increased uh, than when it normally is. So, so if you feel- live east, on the east side of town, anywhere near the Pecos, where the Pecos overflowed mm-hmm. from the flooding, uh, mosquitoes are amplified. I live out there. Um, mosquitoes are amplified. Like, I have to spray myself inside my house before going outside because the second I open my door, wow, it's boom. Man. So they make mosquito spray for dogs and cats. They okay. sell it at Petco. Um, it's man, lemongrass, catnip, and can't remember the third ingredient in it, but it's an all natural spray. Okay. It's very strong odored. All right. I sprayed it on myself and my husband said, <laughs> what did you spray? And I was like, it's my new cologne. What I was like, well, I'm trying the dog's flea and tick or mosquito spray before I put it on them. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. It keeps your husband away if you don't want it around. If you need no, if you need less friends, um, try some for yourself. But <laughs> as you see me itching mosquito bite, um, it it seemed to help for them. Good. Um, but if you're on the east side of town, close to the river, I feel your pain. The mosquitoes are horrible over there, mm. and um, even um, our horse was just covered in mosquitoes. And the spray that we put on him for the flies covers mosquitoes too. Mm, okay. But because of how much rain we got and then the water you have to reapply it more often than you normally would because the humidity makes you sweat so sure. you sweat you sweat it, it off, off and then you got to reapply yep. yeah okay but yeah they uh, but petco has it if you're mm-hmm. looking for some and it's an all natural mosquito spray for dogs gotcha probably do that instead of um, off or whatever you put on yeah people. you can't put deed on dogs yeah. that's very toxic to them okay um, so you want to get the all natural stuff that's specific for dogs. Um, and that way you're making sure that you're not harming them while you're trying to protect them. Yeah, absolutely. Good deal. But like I said, swing by, get some and just be mindful of this stuff, even though this is a little different than we're normally used to as far as humidity and things. Normally these aren't things we concern ourselves too much with, but because of the rains, um, right. this is one of those things to protect your dogs. Uh, just one one more uh, layer of protection there for you. So good deal. It is, and it it doesn't hurt to be over cautious. Absolutely, and like I said, the heartworm thing is literally the easiest medicine you've ever given anything ever. It's it's literally like just feeding your dog treats. That's all it is. I give my dogs Brevecto mm-hmm. for the flea and ticks, and they hear the foil yeah. for the wrapper, and they're like, oh. <laughs> oh yeah so, and it's funny because like i can open anything else and they're typically like eh but they know that foil they, they know, know that, that sound. sound so i started opening it in the car oh, to get a preemptive uh, yeah because if i do it in the house you know titus is like monster so he's like hi mom <laughs> right mine like oh that's for me isn't it i'll take that yeah, yeah and so when you've got the big dog here and then toby which is not the big dog anymore you know right the big dog tries to take both treats and i'm like no <laughs> no can't do that <laughs> one per but uh but yeah so please get that done let's um talk uh what's available at the shelter right now so how, how are pets looking we are full okay but currently we are closed because we have two employees out with covid okay so um I have a skeleton crew. <laughs> okay. So the, the, um, the we were hoping is... to reopen today, um, but she tested positive again. Oh, so man. too bad. Um, I have to wait for her to test negative. So, so that way I at least have one person back. So hopefully um, the next day or two. Hopefully she, by back. Wednesday, we should be back open because she has to retest in five days. Okay. So we'll be a couple more days. Mm-hmm. Here. What about the thrift store? Is the that... thrift store is open. Okay. Um, everybody's good over there. Good. Okay. Um, they have a ton of stuff. Um, and actually they have a ton of fishing stuff. Oh, so nice. if you were a fisher, they've got jigs, they've got poles, they've got lures, they've got floating bobbers. Oh, okay. 
Um, I bought two hundred fifty dollars worth of it yesterday. Nice. And there's still a crap ton more. Good. Um, there's fly fish and stuff. There's catfish and stuff. There's bass. There's trout. All right. So you got a little. So uh, you know, this Saturday is the Dragonfly Festival, and of course, the BLM will have their kids fishing pool and everything out there. Maybe if you want to teach your your child fishing. Go head over to the thrift store, pick up some fishing gear, and then take it with you out to the Dragonfly Festival on Saturday yeah. and break it in. Give it a try. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and it's funny because the person who donated it um, is very organized. And, like, when I saw this stuff, I was like, oh, man, we very could be meticulous, friends. Very huh? meticulous, yeah. Because they had, like, styrofoam, like, you know, that you put, like, for the fake flowers to keep them in a pot. Mm-hmm. They had the jigs perfectly poked in through the styrofoam. And nice. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Ranged in sizes. I was like, Wow. wow. Yeah, there's some they, OCD they going on there. They share my OCD, and my husband started laughing. I was like, look, and he's like, no. I was like, oh, okay. We smell our kind. We know. <laughs> and I was like, and, okay, so in, to make it even more funny, I had just ordered a new check ledger mm. for a checking account. Well, the little ones that normally come with the checks, when I ordered checks, they didn't come with it. Oh. So I was like, oh, whatever. So I just ordered one on Amazon. So I ordered a spiral one. And I told my husband, I was like, look what came in the mail today. I was like, how do you know you're a dork and an adult? You get happy over a check ledger. <laughs> and he's like, okay. But it seems so important. I was like, organization. <laughs> so. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was a kid and like, like uh, especially when I was like 16, I started working at like, you know, fast food plate, you know, the stuff teenagers work at and. I remember, like, when they'd get out their checkbooks, and it was always that that ledger one, the big book, notebook with the spiral. And, yep. And I remember, it's like, you got to be important to have one of those. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's just, it just looks more important. You're like, let me write you a check, and you whip out this big book and all that. Yeah. And uh, I always remembered when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to do that someday. I never have because checks went the way of the dodo. But, but uh, yeah, I, I never did do it. I still write checks. I, I write, like, two checks a year, you know, depending on, like, like my American Legion dues, I, I write a check for every year. Um, if I ever get a speeding ticket, you have to write a check when you go up to the the Oh, courthouse so is that back. your one speeding ticket a year? <laughs> yeah, I get one a year. That's whether I need it or not. No. Uh, of course, I haven't got one in a few years, but that's the last time. I, yeah, right now, I just jinxed myself. Yeah. If you see me out and about today, officers, please hook, hook a brother up. Just give me, <laughs> cut me a break. Lead foot winters. <laughs> 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 He's trying to speed winter to us quicker than we need it. That's right. Yeah, uh, I, I'm important. I need to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> the weather will not change unless I'm going fast. That's right. <laughs> Do you want to be sweaty? I didn't think so. <laughs> Do you realize who you're dealing with? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um. So very organized fishing stuff. Good deal. Um. They've so probably well maintained and well taken care of very too. Very well, well organized. And, and it's funny because some of the bobbers that we bought, he has the original package that he bought it in. So after he used it, he'd put it back in that package, or if they were even used, because mm-hmm. the majority of them look brand new. Brand new. So um, he's there's probably well over a thousand dollars worth of just lures and oh, jigs wow. and bobbers and. And you get it for pennies on the dollar right now. Yep. So that's great and. Uh, and that's probably just scratching the surface. Like if you're looking for small appliances, clothing, um, um, any of that kind of stuff. A ton of blankets. Uh, yeah, home school decor. Stuff. You know, they got a lot of school stuff, a lot of home decor, a lot of wall decorations. Um, really cool, cute ones from Hobby Lobby that they okay. discontinued. So they sent them over to us. I imagine they'll be busting out Halloween stuff here pretty quick, too. They, I hour. believe they already have some of the Halloween stuff out. I don't okay. think they have all of it out, but I do think they already have some of it out. Good. Um, so. I know that they were talking about getting the costumes out here soon. Um, they were just trying to clear out an area to set the big costume rack up. Sure. Um, lots of clothes. Always having different cells on clothes. Um, anytime you walk in, there's a whiteboard on the left-hand side of the wall. Any cell of the day is going to be listed on the whiteboard. So okay. if it's back room half off or if it's clothing half off, it's going to be written on that board. Perfect. Very good. And. I'm telling you, if you love to decorate for the holidays, uh, Halloween, Christmas, if you're not visiting the thrift store first before you go you're buy crazy. it, then you're crazy because literally people donate this stuff. It's used once or, or barely used. Costumes, decor, doesn't matter. People just, the plastic pumpkins, all that stuff. You, you go to the big box store and buy it brand new. You're getting it for a tenth of the price 
Uh, and it's the same stuff. It's the I mean, it literally is nothing wrong with it, and you're getting it for a tenth of the and price. And the majority of the costumes are always two dollars. Yeah, and worn once most of the time, or not at all, depending on uh, you know. I didn't like that costume. I want this costume. You know, right? You know, and if you have a picky kid who changes their mind like every five minutes. Take them to the thrift store, let them pick out a $2 costume. When there they change go. their mind, you take them back, let them pick out another $2 yeah. costume. And return that one and uh, mm-hmm. sell it again and pay another $2 for another one. And, yep. and you're helping the Humane Society every single time doing that. So. All proceeds go to helping the animals in care. Um, yeah. Go to maintaining the building, the thrift store, and you know, upkeeping needs that need to be done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, if you are looking to adopt a pet, um, like like she said, because of the the COVID uh, outbreak there, that uh, there's uh, no the the actual shelters closed right now. We are closed, but, but you can still look at them on the website. Yeah, go to the website RoswellHumane.org. Uh, uh, you go there and you can see every single animal that's calling the uh, Humane Society home right now. Yes. So if you see not available next to that that picture. Uh, that just means they're uh, in quarantine, either because of they're trying to make weight or they're new to the shelter and they haven't been updated with the you know, they need more vaccinations and that, yeah, that stuff, uh, or uh, something along those lines. They will be available for adoption as soon as they meet those goals. Yes, and then if you're um, if you call, leave a message. Um, we will return calls. Um, it's just right now we're on a skeleton crew. Um, we are currently hiring again. Uh, okay. My last employee's husband got a better job out of roswell so it happens yeah so i am no longer full staffed we are short staffed again so um, someone wants to loves working with animals full loves time, that stuff full-time job kennel here. worker yeah um come in bring a resume cover letter yeah um, i'm hoping we'll be back open on wednesday um if you come by and we're still closed we there's a mail slot on the door slide it through the mail slot i'll get it and then Perfect. Um, hopefully we can get somebody in there pretty quickly. Yeah. And, of course, if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, the, the Roswell Humane Society does have a Facebook page. You mm-hmm. can shoot a message through there. And someone yes, will and that goes directly you. to my phone. So Good deal. So that's a great way to... If I'm not scrubbing cages, I'm trying to keep up on emails and messages. <laughs> so. Well, and that's a great way. So if you're thinking like tomorrow or, or maybe next Wednesday, you're like, hey, is it open yet? And you don't want to, you know, go check, check. You know, yeah, you'll see a message there on the Facebook. Page. However, gas prices have gone down a little bit. Still not enough. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. But uh, but in the meantime, please support the thrift store. Come shop. Donate yes. as well. Um, obviously, if it's bigger ticket, bigger items, things like that, please call before you want to donate to make arrangements for that kind of if stuff. If you need it picked up, schedule a pickup. Yeah, because there is so much room for storage and things. And unfortunately, we need a bigger kennels and a bigger thrift store. But the only problem problem is, you know, the bigger you get, the more you need help with, and then it's a never-ending cycle. It's a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, we got more space. That means we got more stuff. We need more people to maintain it. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a thing. But, but it's, it's, it's. But thanks to the generosity and support of the community, that that's we are in a great situation there as far as. A lot of great stuff to shop for and a lot of great pets that are looking for homes right now. Yes. Any, uh, if we have any Labradoodle fans out there, we have three okay. F1 Labradoodles. Nice. Two females, one male. Um, they're all from the same litter. Okay. Um, we know they're F1 because the actual breeder released them to us. Okay. Um, so they're, I guess, got their papers or whatever it is, that, uh, AKC, whatever it is called. Or... I don't think that they filed their papers. Okay. Um. Or we at least didn't get a copy of it. I got you. Okay. um, There are um, Lulu, Winston, and Maybelline are their names. All right. Um, Maybelline's just about to get her second set of vaccinations, and then she'll be coming out of quarantine soon, too. But Lulu and Winston are already out of quarantine. All right. Number three uh, right around the corner here. So hopefully next week. Any Labradoodle fans? Very good. We got three. Good deal. (laughs) And, of course... uh, how the cats right now? Are that pretty full too. A lot of cats, a lot of younger cats. We're in the three to six month range of cats. We do have a couple uh, four year olds. Um, two are Russian blues. They basically are twins. Okay. Um, they're all from the same household. Um, and then we have a black and white. Uh, he's four years old. And then we have a female tortoiseshell who's uh, four years old. Okay. So uh, mostly younger, but a good mix there. <laughs> if you want something that's more full grown and not as kitten like. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, we only have four adults right now. <laughs> <laughs> the rest are younger kittens, and you know, anywhere from three months to six months of age. And that's probably good for the adoption because I'm, I'm sure kittens get adopted way more often than a adult cat does. You know, and then you have, when you have 
a slew of kittens. You have somebody. I want an adult cat. And I'm like, <laughs> I just had 18 of them right. like Where two you months ago. Week? Where were you? <laughs> so it, yeah. it never fails. You know, when you have it, nobody wants it. When you don't have it, everybody wants right. it. It's, it's, like, it's like chihuahuas. If everyone wants a chihuahua, there wouldn't be one to be found. But the moment, you know, that, that people stop looking, you've got 30 of them. So it, it's yep. the way it is. So And chihuahuas are probably that most as far as fluctuating popularity breed there because they are always in this area very popular but they have a rash of them and then no one wants them and then you see a bunch of them and then they start getting adopted and then people looking for chihuahuas and they're they're none to be had we used to um say chihuahuas are a dozen a dozen in new mexico mm -hmm. they're not a dime a dozen they're a dozen a dozen mm -hmm. absolutely mm -hmm. so um but if you're looking please go to the, the humane society's website yes peruse the uh photos there um, and then, uh, of course, check back if you're if you're interested in, in adopting or want more information about one of the pets. And like I said, next week we can hopefully set something up and get get that all that ball that process going. So yeah, and if you're looking for a job, swing by. Um, yeah. Like I said, unfortunately we are closed because of COVID, um, but slip one through the mail slot. Um, yeah. Your daily duties uh, basically is tending to the needs of those pets, cleaning cages, making you know. Uh, feeding, them. feeding them, changing litter, cleaning up, um, interacting, playing with the pets, doing all the brushing. Yeah, the un the unfun part is the poo part, but yeah. like, you know that's basically that's, being a mommy or daddy for for all the pets there at the shelter. And you know, a lot of people ask, you know, how do you do it? It's not hard. Um, it's really the majority of your physical labor is carrying a shovel. And hauling dog food. Yeah. So, um, a lot of walking, but sure. not a lot of, you know, back-breaking physical labor. Yeah, no. you're just going back and forth, tending. You know, obviously, it gets a little loud in there because it's a bunch of animals barking and meowing. But, yeah. When they're... So, they really are quiet unless it's a stranger. Okay. Once they're familiar with you, they don't bark a lot. It gets it gets so, pretty, pretty cool and calm in there. You know, when, like, on days we're close to the public natural and you're in there cleaning, like, when you first get there, they're like, oh, hi! And then they're like, ah, it's you. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, wait, here. you're the lady that feeds us. That's right. It's like, oh, food time. Yeah. Hi. So, but for the most part, you know, once they're used to you, you know, they don't bark a lot. Gotcha. Um, very calm. You know, you have your crazy dogs but sure. and cats, but yeah. that's with everybody. So. Absolutely. Yeah. You always get the one that's just, just excited round up all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> you get the one that just has no calm. Yeah. Has you, no chill. You wonder. You wonder how you can harness that energy and put it towards good. But uh, it's, we got to figure out some kind of gene or something you can put into people to do that. So we have a dog who's currently at um, my boss's house getting a bath because she um, is a hot mess, <laughs> and her name is Coco. Okay. Well, Coco has um, some birth defects okay um her jaw is hinged to where her mouth only opens literally a quarter of an inch oh man but she also has her upper jaw never developed a bone so it's curled under like this oh wow and she has a crooked face so it's she have trouble eating and doing all those things or? she eats on one side of her mouth she can't eat big, big bites. She has to have small bites. Okay. Um, and obviously somebody bottle fed her and took care of her. Um, but she was found as a stray that we got from animal control. Mm. Um, and she's a poodle mix. Um, she's a ball of energy. I mean, a ball of energy. She's like the atom ball. Like, you know, when you drag <laughs> your fingers around right, on the electric yeah. thing, that's her. <laughs> so I wish so my a boss, happy dog. Just... She, and she's happy. She loves everything. She loves everybody. Um, she does have a brachial symphalic where that means her palate is not fully pulled forward. So mm -hmm. she breathes like a bulldog. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but dogs like that heat stroke and overheat a lot quicker than normal. And because of how her jaw is and her sinus cavities, mm -hmm. there's nothing blocking it, but she has to have her nose cleaned every day. So she always has like a little bit of boogers on her nose. Okay. So she needs a little bit more maintenance. Than she does. Other animals She's somebody do. who needs. She needs to go with somebody who's got the time to take care of yeah. her needs. 
but she's also a super fast learner. Okay. Um, she knows how to sit. She knows how to shake. She knows how to lay down, and she knows how to roll so over. So she'll fall into a routine probably pretty easily. Super easy. Um, but you just got to do more work with her because she, need, she needs more care than others. The pepperoni treats, um, we break them into tiny pieces for her. And so when we are we have her out and we're working with her, you tell her sit. She sees that pepperoni. She sits, <laughs> lays down. High fives and then rolls over <laughs> all in one. And I'm like, you don't have to do four tricks for one treat, sweetheart. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, I, I'll do it all. What's the routine? I got yeah. it. <laughs> so, and it's funny because, like, she goes so fast when she's doing it. Like, she tries to high five before she lays down. So she's like, hi. <laughs> but she's super sweet. Um, she has a lot of energy. But I think a lot of that energy will calm down when she has, you know, natural area to run in and exercise on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. my boss is going to call me telling me she's exhausted today because of her energy, because she <laughs> has a lot of energy. Um, but she's a very sweet dog. Um, she did great for the grooming. Um, she's a little bit of a handful when you got to clean her face cause she doesn't like her nose clean, but gotcha. she's like a toddler, you know, who's got a runny nose that you're chasing after to clean. Right. That's her. She's like, nope, <laughs> nope, these are mine. I'm keeping them. But I think, you know, once you do it every day and get the routine with her, she'll probably, you know what I mean? If it, she does. After a while, she's yeah. like, <sighs> fine, get it over with. She, she becomes that teenager with a sigh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds like a very fun dog, though, to and have she in, is. in the home. Um, and her looks, like when you look at her, like her mouth is like this. So she's crooked, and then she's like, hi. <laughs> and like, she's just bouncing. So it's like she's very cute in her ugly way kind of thing. You know, it's like an yeah. ugly dog, but it's so cute at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. So hopefully we'll find her a home here pretty soon. So. Yeah, she, she needs a good home. She needs a home that's going to tend to her special needs and love her for all her flaws. Cool. And I'm sure she'll bring so much to a family that, that is willing to embrace and love her. So. She's she's a super happy dog. I'm telling you, if you need some, uh, what do they call it in your brain when um, serotonin release? Uh -huh. She's gonna release your serotonin. <laughs> Very you know, good. I had to think of what the name was. What's that called? <laughs> Very cool. So so hopefully come see her next week when uh, yes. when everything hopefully opens back up yeah. here. So <laughs> everyone everyone gets healthy again. Yes. So um, again, RoswellHumane.org is the website. Um, don't, uh, you can, of course, come by the thrift store, well, here in about 15 minutes. Uh, They'll be opening up. Yeah, 203, or not, is it 203? It's, it's Seven, East McGaffey. 703. <laughs> East McGaffey, that's the word I was meaning. 203, I think it gets the furniture store. <laughs> I think so, too. I was like, um, no, we're a few more blocks. Down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, East McGaffey there. The, the Humane Society is right next door to Animal Control. So um, if, if you're looking for pets, walk right next door to Animal Control and see the See the selection they've got right now. No, uh, if you are missing a pet, as in like it got picked up, mm -hmm. look at Animal Control. Okay. Um, right now, we're only taking in owner releases because we have a waiting list still of animals needing to come into the shelter from owners surrendering. Okay. Um, so we're very limited on in taking of strays. Gotcha. Um, depending on the size of the dog and if I have a smaller kennel or medium kennel available, um, we have taken in some recently. Just not very many. The majority of everything that's in the shelter is an owner release. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, change that by adopting a bunch of animals and free up some, some open space there. Yeah. Good deal. Um, is there anything we missed? I don't think so. Good deal. Uh, any, any? Uh, I guess there's probably not any events coming up or anything since you guys are pretty short staffed. No, at the we moment. were going to be at Tractor Supply this weekend. And then Terry um, is the one who helps us when we do our events. And I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe here in a, in a week or so we can get back on that, that schedule. Yeah, I'm again, hoping so. that we get back to normal. Um, everything back in operations of Wednesday of next week. Yeah. Fingers so. crossed yep. that she's negative. Yeah. And I imagine, is she showing signs, like feeling? She doesn't feel very well either. Okay. So. Okay. I didn't know. Like, if she was feeling good, just negative, you know. But, yeah. but, uh, but. Uh, well, get get healthy first. That's more important. Yeah, so. she's not feeling very well. When I talk to her, she's like, I have like five minutes of energy and then I'm down. And I'm like, no, stay home. Yeah, yeah. Stay home. That's not going to be very helpful, five minutes of work. but No, <laughs> <laughs> five minutes of work for a two-hour recoup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then quite math don't work out yet. So. Nope. 
Uh, well, as always, appreciate it. Yes, thank you, guys. We'll see you next time here. And, uh, of course, roswellhumane.org. If you're looking for, check out the pets. If yes. you want to become a member, great way to learn about all yes. the different ways uh, and, and what, whom and what can become a member. So. New memberships are coming up due after October. Okay. Um, when we send out the October newsletter, it'll have the new membership forms on it for 2023. Okay. Um, if you're not a member and you want a membership form, um, you can get one online, or you can even call and I'll mail you one, whatever. Very good. Uh, you know, it's a great way to support the Humane Society when, uh, you know, especially if you adopted all your a number allotted animals, you're you're going to be adopting. Another great way to keep supporting right? is uh, is becoming a member. So. Here, let me pack you up a patch <laughs> right. of pups, and then That's right. here you go. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. So, well, thank you, Crystal, as always. We'll thank see you, you next time. It is uh, closing in on 9.50. Let's go ahead and get you up to date with news. Uh, Hannity update, quick break, and uh, Wall Street business update. Don't go away. Now your Pecos Valley news update. I'm Jared Cirello. Four people injured Wednesday when an ambulance transporting a patient crashed and rolled over. It happened on U.S. Highway 70. State police blocked traffic through about 6 o'clock Wednesday night. Chavez County Sheriff's deputy said only one person's injuries were thought to be serious. No other vehicles were involved. It's good news for the coffers of Eddy County. Steady crude oil prices have led to increased oil and gas tax collections for county government. In July alone, the county bank rolled $8.9 million in taxes from the industry. That's up slightly from June revenue, according to Finance Director Roberta Smith. Nearly 19 million barrels of oil were produced from Eddy County in the month of July. And a New Mexico State District judge on Tuesday disqualified County Commissioner and Cowboys for Trump co-founder Coy Griffin from holding public office for engaging in what the judge called insurrection activities at the U.S. Capitol. You're up to date. I'm Jared Cirello. Your morning cup of Sean. This is the Sean Hannity Morning Minute. Why are you going to make the Iranian mullahs rich again? Like up until last year, you were making Putin and Russia rich again so they can start wars in Ukraine. Uh, why are you going to make the Sa Saudi Arabia rich again, OPEC nations rich again? Why would you make Venezuela rich again when we have all the natural resources here? Th this is your Green New Deal socialism. This is so after 4 p.m., pre-cool your home. Oh, OK. What do you do if you have that electric car they were telling you to buy? How are you going to charge your car if you don't get home before 4 p.m. to charge it? And by the way, where does the charging come from? 90% of the electric grid is fossil fuel related. The conservative underground meets later today on the Sean Hannity Show. All right, we all know ammo is expensive and in short supply. Did you know you can train without ammunition at your house using Mantis X? The Mantis X Firearms Training System is a no-ammo, all-electronic way to practice and improve your shooting accuracy. Now, it simply attaches to your own firearm like a weapons light, and you can use it at home or at the range. The Mantis X gives you data-driven, real-time feedback on your technique and guides you through drills and courses. 94% of shooters improve within 20 minutes of using Mantis X. It's military-grade technology at an affordable price. Now, the Mantis X has improved my shooting dramatically and is a must-have for every gun owner. If you believe in your Second Amendment rights, you must also act on your Second Amendment responsibility to be confident and competent in your shooting ability. Now, start improving your shooting accuracy today. Get your Mantis X now when you go to MantisX.com. That's one word, MantisX.com. I'm meteorologist Steve Hamilton with your Pecos Valley weather. About the same for the next couple of days with high pressure parked over eastern New Mexico and the western panhandle. That'll take us into the low 90s for the afternoon high today and sunny. A few clouds overnight, low 60s, and then we'll hit the mid-90s with a sunny day coming up on Friday. Saturday, sunshine with a few clouds and low 90s, and then a lot cooler with a few showers Sunday, 85. That's your latest forecast. I'm meteorologist Steve Hamilton. With the Wall Street Business Report, I'm Rich Thomason. Following yesterday's gains on Wall Street this morning, the market turned mixed. The benchmarks lost some ground amid concern over the future direction of interest rates. The European Central Bank made its largest ever 
single rate hike, the bank's 25-member governing council raising its key benchmark by an unprecedented three-quarters of a percentage point for the 19 countries that use the euro currency. Bank President Christine Lagarde says the ECB will keep hiking rates over the next several meetings because inflation remains far too high. And she says it's likely to stay above the bank's target for an extended period of time. The number of Americans filing for jobless benefits last week dropped to its lowest level since May. Applications for unemployment benefits fell by 6,000 to 222,000. For the Wall Street Business Report, I'm Rich Thomason. Roswell Ford presents the second annual Hometown Heroes Car Show and Commemoration of 9-11. Saturday, September 10th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Wool Bowl in Roswell. With lots of different categories to choose from, including classic and muscle cars, low riders and hot rods, best paint job, and so much more. Trophies awarded the first place in each category with a $1,000 cash prize for best overall. And lots of great prizes, including a smart TV, an LGS gift card, furniture, car washes, and more. Enjoy jolly jumps, snow cones, music, and food. Best Best of all, it's free to spectate and only $25 to register your vehicle, with a portion of the proceeds to benefit the Tunnels to Towers Foundation. Register and get more info at roswellford.com. Sponsored by La Salsa, Decor of Carlsbad, LGS Guns and Ammo, Chavez County Heroes, 106.5 Roswell's Talk FM, Suds Up, One Party Rentals, Piero 106.1 FM, CRM Discount Awards, National Furniture Liquidators, Keep Chavez County Beautiful, and Let's Play Entertainment. The second annual Hometown Heroes Car Show, Saturday, September 10th at the Wool Bowl in Roswell. Hey, Mark. Morning, Sam. Having the house remodeled? Nah, I got termites, and they're chewing the place up. Welcome to the neighborhood. I've got them, too. Really? Yeah, I just had a termite treatment put in. You did? I didn't see a lot of digging around your house. That's because I went with the Centricon Termite Colony Elimination System. It's a lot easier to install than what you're doing. They just place bait stations around the house, and then the termites share the bait with each other until the colony is gone. No digging, no chemical solution, just simple protection that's environmentally responsible. Wow. Yeah, I even got a green chemistry award from the EPA. Centricon, huh? I'll be right back. Hey, where are you going? Tell these guys to stop digging. I'm getting Centricon. Call Bob Reed Pest Control today for all of Southeast New Mexico, 575-623-5344. Well, the biting bugs and the ferocious flyers are out in force. And if you don't take care of them now, you'll be swatting and scratching all summer. Makes me itchy just thinking about it. Hi, this is Jim Gill from Roswell Seed Company. Whether it's keeping the fleas and ticks off your animals or keeping the flies and mosquitoes away from your barbecue, you got to use the right stuff. And you got to do it at the right time. So come see us now at Roswell Seed Company. And don't let the bugs tick you off. Get it? Tick. Hi, I'm Dr. Keon at Carabelli Dental. Same day smiles are what we do. My passion is helping patients chew, talk, and live with confidence. That's why I'm one of the few doctors in the U.S. who can create beautiful same-day smiles with the latest digital implant technology. This procedure is life-changing. Just ask Sean. Hi, I'm Sean. (laughs) I've been that voice that you've heard on the radio for most of my life, but I'm also a dad to two amazing kids. I've had a million reasons to smile, but in all my old pictures, I was never smiling. Truth is that life of improper care and being dealt a bad hand genetically left me practically with no teeth. It affected everything from the way I ate, the way I talked, and of course how I interacted with people. And that's where Dr. Keon and Carabelli stepped in. They eased my fears. They explained every step of the process in a way that I could understand, and they made me feel almost like I was part of the team. And now, I can't stop smiling. I have so much more confidence, and I love looking in the mirror now. I can't explain how much of a difference Dr. Keon's dental implant process made for me. Our team can help you find your smile, too. Come see us at Carabelli Dental, 575-622-4455. Peter Marshall once prayed before the U.S. Senate this, Lord, we thank you that we come to you just as we are, but remind us that we dare not leave as we came. I wish our political leaders took this to heart, but more importantly, we need to take this to heart. Over and over through the New Testament, Jesus encounters sinful, messed up, hurting people and shows them compassion and grace. 
However, he never ignores or condones their plight. He calls them to be better, to move beyond where they are and who they are. Jesus encountered all kinds and led them to be better. There were fishermen and tax collectors, lepers and demon-possessed, adulterers and sinners. Wherever you are, whatever you've done, you can move beyond it by the grace that God gives us through Christ. Maybe you've been a follower of Christ in the past and have lost your way. You can return to him and be more and do more and lead the life that he calls you to lead. Praise God that his forgiveness never ends. We invite you to join us to learn how to be better with him than we are on our own. Join us at the Country Club Road Church of Christ for worship at 10 a.m. on Sunday. Located on the corner of Country Club in Washington in Roswell. The average American spends 2.5 days a year looking for lost items. We aren't sure how long Europeans and Asians look for lost stuff. We lost the list. Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 9.59. Getting ready to wrap up today's show. Of course, if you missed any part, check it out at your leisure, ksvptv.com. Click on the Mornings with Mike Winters channel. You'll find all of our interviews there. You can also go to to uh, look for 106.5 Rosal's Talk FM uh, on YouTube and Facebook as well. We got it all there. Of course, uh, we had a full slate today. Uh, folks from Richmond, we played earlier. We talked Bitter Lake. We talked uh, Historical Society and CAPS program and Humane Society, all this show today. All right, that's going to do it for us. Have an amazing day. We'll talk to you bright and early tomorrow. You're listening.